All right, guys, here's another video log of another uh, 55 I did. Uh, this is at try5.com. It's another one of my old build threads. This is a uh, 55 four-door Bel Air that I found in Venita, Oklahoma. Uh, I paid $600 for the car. It came with a lot of extra parts. Uh, there was actually another car that didn't have any suspension on it out in this field. Uh, so we got to take a bunch of parts off of it, and it had a lot of parts inside of it, and I got those as well. But we left the car there. It was somebody had cut on it, and uh, you know it, just, it really wasn't worth uh, bringing home. Uh, but anyway, I kind of was trying to figure out what to do with the car, and uh, this was in 2008. And I'd actually, uh, you know, I've always wanted a 55 uh, convertible, and I, I know I'll probably never be able to afford one of those. Uh, so my idea was, after watching an episode of Overhauling, where uh, Foose and the gang took the uh, roof off a 56 four-door Bel Air and made it a, a two-door Roadster, uh, that kind of gave me the idea to go ahead and, and try to do something like that with this car. So that's that's what I did. Um, the, it's a it's kind of a funny story because this car, uh, I actually found this about ten years before this, and uh, I was planning on buying it at that time. And then when I finally got the money together to go get it, the guy had sold it, and uh, ten years later I end up with it back. Uh, but anyway, this is the car, uh, so I ended up, uh, I cut cut the top off the car. Uh, I'd actually uh, welded in a bunch of bracing in, in the body to, to brace it up uh, before I actually cut the roof off uh, so it wouldn't fold up on me. That's it there with the uh, steel bracing welded all in it and to uh, brace it up and support it, basically. Uh, I had actually... Uh, pissed off a few people doing that and uh, you know most guys you know four doors or parts cars is what they call them you know and it, it really did uh, after I started cutting on it, it wasn't so bad but man that initial cut making it you know I was like oh crap but uh, anyway, there's a roof laying on the ground and, and uh, you know at that time I didn't have a lot of sheet metal stuff uh, so I basically just took a long piece of the uh, strap and made some uh, slices in it, not all the way to the to the end, and, and that allowed me to fold it. And then I had to go back and weld all the cuts back up. But that's how I got the curve to plate back in the uh, uh, the windshield post. Um, here's some of the end cap pieces I made uh, out of steel, and that's them welded in. Uh, I went through a ton of MIG wire and a ton of uh, uh, sheet metal, and man, let me tell you, it was a, a lot of cutoff wheels too. Um, you know, four doors, they have really short doors, and uh, I was trying to make a two-door roadster that actually resembled an actual convertible, uh, so I went and got another set of front doors, uh, it's actually off the other car I got with this one, and uh, I cut 12 inches off the, the back of the other door and welded it to these uh, to get the uh, two-door length. That's it there with the uh, other door sections welded on. And, uh, you know, I didn't need any door glass or anything in it, so I had to make all kinds of little patch pieces and, and put strips of steel down where the windows would, you know, would come up. So basically welded the garnish moldings to the doors. And, uh, man, it was, a, it was a lot of grinding. A lot of grinding. This is the chassis uh, from under the car. Uh, this is my very first Morrison style center that I made. Um, it turned out pretty slick and uh, that really, really strengthened that car up a lot. Uh, if you've got a Tri-5 and you know you, you don't have any type of support in your frame, uh, now I'm not talking about convertibles, I'm talking about just regular sedans or hard tops. You know, when you jack up one wheel you can jack that one wheel up off the ground 25 inches or you know as far as you want and the other three wheels or tires are still going to be touching the ground uh, that's how much in frames flex uh, but when you do that you can put the jack under you know that wheel and jack it up and the other wheel on the same side will come up with it uh, it, it basically that's why those centers like that are in the new model the new frames uh, the aftermarket frames 
and, and that's why companies offer that center section that you can either bolt in or weld into your chassis because uh, they actually work. They stiffen the crap out of the car. And when you cut the top off of a car, you lose all that structure. And uh, that really helped put it back in, you know, for the most part. So I actually removed the, the door jam piece, uh, which would have been the B pillar. I actually removed it from the car and moved it back and set up my door gap and, and then actually welded it back up. Uh, I used a piece of square tubing in there for a brace uh, from the B pillar to the rear jam section. And now I took the rear doors and actually cut the skin loose from the door itself and I shortened it and I welded up the door handle holes and, and all that stuff and I actually butt welded it in there and uh, ground all the welds and that's a that's a two-door molding on the car uh, side molding and uh, actually a guy that was watching me do the build on the car had those in his uh, rafters of his shop and he gave them to me for free and they were really really nice but, uh, you know, this car was a roadster, so I didn't have any door glasses. Uh, I didn't even put any weather stripping on it or anything. And the door shut so nice without all that stuff. Uh, they're really light. But uh, I shaved the door handles because, you know, you could just reach over the side of the door and grab the door handle and turn it. So that's that's kind of what I did. Uh, redneck shaved door handles, I guess you'd call it. So I basically used an aircraft stripper and... Uh, put chemical stripper on it, and I got the quarter all stripped down to bare metal. I ended up doing the door and everything also, but uh, this is kind of as I was going. You can kind of see how it was turning out there in raw metal uh, with it butt welded in the, the welds ground. It, uh, it, it turned out pretty dang nice. In this picture, you can see where I was welding the garnish moldings too. Uh, I did have to go back and weld up those oval little slots you see on top back there, but... Uh, I had to get uh, pretty creative when you, you know, weld the garnish moldings up the way the door shape edges are shaped at the back on the top there, um, to get my gap the way I wanted it. You know, I had to pretty much make all that stuff. But uh, I mean, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, and it's still only like three months or something. I think I spent on this car. This is a shot of the uh, passenger side. Uh, I put, uh, I did a little body work on it, and then did my uh, Z Chrome primer on it. Then I uh, blocked it out and uh, put on a 2K black urethane primer on it. Uh, these wheels are 18 inch. I think they're 18 eighths all the way around. I actually got them off Craigslist, I think, for like 400 bucks or something, and the tires were pretty new. Uh, so I was a pretty good find at the time for the car. But uh, I didn't do really anything in the engine compartment. I didn't work on the firewall or anything. I was actually planning on tearing the car back apart and. Uh, you know, taking it back off the frame and doing it all up really, really nice. Uh, we actually the club car club I was in. We had a 200 mile car cruise around Grand Lake scheduled, uh, so I was trying to get the car, you know, basically roughed together to take on that cruise. Uh, so that's what I did. Uh, this is a 305 engine out of a I think it's a 79 Malibu I'd bought. Uh, so I just put that used engine in there. Uh, also, it was a 700R4 transmission, and I uh, custom made the throttle bracket uh, and for the you know the TV cable for the transmission and everything. That was my first overdrive swap for myself, and uh, the rear end was a 10 bolt out of a late 70s Camaro. It was a 256 gear, and I put that 700R4 in there, and I'm telling you what, when I took off down the highway. That was freaking awesome. Uh, it didn't lug when it went into overdrive, uh, but it, it it was smooth, man. Very, very smooth. You know, interior is, it's one of the most expensive things to do to your car or have done or whatever. Uh, and I was on a severe budget like I usually am. And uh, me and a friend of mine went to our local LKQ pull-apart salvage. Uh, it was a 2001 Chrysler Concorde and the seats the whole car looked nice, like it had been garage kept, uh, but it had been wrecked in the front. And uh, I got all the seats, uh, front and rear seats out of it for 125 bucks, I think, or no, I think I gave 65 or 70 for the seats. And uh, I have a, a large automotive upholstery supply in Tulsa called American Upholstery. And uh, we stopped by there after we left the salvage and uh, took the seat in with me. 
they have all the books from Detroit for all the car manufacturers, and we found, looked it up by year and manufacturer, and we found that exact velour material and matched it up, and they're off the swatch. Uh, they actually ordered it from Detroit. I paid 125 bucks for a few yards of that uh, from Detroit, from Chrysler, I guess. Um, but anyway, I bought the extra material to do the door panels and stuff in the car. Uh, the Chrysler Concord rear seat fit in there really nice, and it had that neat little fold-down armrest back there, which was really cool. Uh, another cool thing about them is uh, they have a power and a ground, and that's pretty much it on both seats. And uh, so I actually hooked them up and had power seats. Uh, kind of neat. The uh, seat belts I used were just lap belts, and they're actually rear seat belts from a, like a box Caprice. This is it as it's getting closer to being together. I actually, I think I cut a full coil out of the front to get it down that low. But uh, I kind of got the, the stance I was going for. I actually uh, sanded and painted the dash of the car, the blue pearl. Uh, that's the color I was going to paint the car. And uh, down here you see those, those seats, they come with the headrest. And I do not like headrests in old cars. Uh, it looks out of place to me. Uh, so what I did was... Uh, basically removed all the stuff for the headrest and I welded a piece of strap across the bottom uh, to the to the stem of it leaving the deal on it so it wouldn't lose the the width that it is you know and then I cut it off I actually rounded the ends of the strap and I took the material off of the headrest and spray glued it to that strap and then shoved it back down into its runners uh, so it basically made a nice little cover cap for where the headrest used to be and then I took some old quarter panel crests and I painted them a uh, trim paint color that was kind of close of a gray color and put those on there just for a little added detail. But uh, after I put the crest on, I kind of liked it without better. But uh, uh, I'd already drilled the holes and I was pretty much stuck with it after that. So I took a piece of uh, plywood and uh, cut it to make it look like a factory uh, convertible top boot. Uh, I had laid aluminum foil all over the back of the car and I just laid fiberglass mat all over it and brushed resin all over it and kind of let it hang off onto the car and then I went back and cut it. Uh, I planned on uh, putting body filler on the whole thing and smoothing it out and doing it primer black, but I just run out of time for that car cruise, so I didn't get any. I bolted it on, but I didn't have any time to, to do any paintwork to it. But uh, there's the grill and the hood bird on the car. And uh, I got the molded carpet kit in, and I had to build a little riser uh, to come up to the bottom uh, of that Concord seat. And the molded carpet kit, when you trim all the excess off the sides where your seal plates go, that was just enough to cover those pieces. So it worked out really nice uh, for a pretty cheap. And so here we are on the car cruise. This was like three months, and I'm already driving this car. Uh, I never had one mechanical issue go wrong with that car uh, that I had to mess with it. Um, that's us, uh, me and my wife, coming into Adair, Oklahoma, and a guy was on the side of the road that's from the Forum, and that's where he met up to go on the cruise with us, and he actually took the picture. Uh, I pretty much led the pack, and uh, that's just a picture over the hood bird that I thought was cool. And then here's a picture I took. Uh, there's a 55 uh, behind me uh, that was part of the cruise with us, and it's a two-lane blacktop clone car, and I thought that was a neat picture. And that's my Uncle Wayne driving his 55 uh, four-door. And here we are in a parking lot, all of us uh, grouping up together. Uh, the other video uh, I just did of the 57 four-door, yeah, that's it beside me. That's my buddy's car. He just took it on the cruise with us. Uh, a friend of mine took these pictures uh, from his T uh, coupe project. And uh, that's us running down the road. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, that was a... That's a really neat car, and, and just like every car that uh, I build, you've always got them guys that are like, oh, you can't do that, oh, you can't do this. Well, I'm here to tell you, I by God did it. And uh, I ended up selling that car. A guy on the cruise that was with us asked me if I wanted to sell it, and I, I told him I would. I just didn't know how much. And he said a friend of his was looking for a father-son project, and uh, the guy come the next day and bought that car. So I never did even get to finish it. Uh, but for me, you know, it was on to the next. I actually went and got another four-door 55 uh, body, and I cut the top off of it. Uh, now, one thing to note about a sedan and a hardtop or convertible, hardtop and convertible is pretty much the same car. 
on a sedan, the belt line's pretty much straight across here. On a hard top and convertible, the door comes down at an angle and the, the quarter panel kind of comes down to it here. So it's almost like a the waist of a woman, you know, it gets thinner right here. And uh, so this really kind of broke it up to make it where you, you knew it really wasn't a real convertible. But the other thing to me is the windshield frame and the windshield's too tall on a, on a sedan. Uh, the windshield on a hard top and a sedan is not the same. Uh, I, I can't remember the exact measurement. I want to say it's seven eighths of an inch. It's pretty close to an inch height difference. The sedan windshield is taller. Uh, so that other uh, Roadster, the other Roadster, I uh, changed the windshield frame out. But uh, I never finished it. I ended up using the pieces for my hardtop. So anyway, there's my 55 Roadster.